Hi everyone, as it's nearly Valentine's Day, I thought I would do you a quick little tutorial and we're gonna do a pair of gorgeous lovebirds. Perfect for beginners, so let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start with our sketch, if I can find my pencil. Here we go. So we just want a pair of cute little Hello. So let's get started with a very simple sketch. We are going to come around the top curve of the head, into the shoulder and out slightly, and then down towards the branch. And we're going to then pop in a little band of white around the top of the beak and a nice curved beak going round. Lastly, on this bird, all we need is an oval shape for the eye. Two oval shapes, one the band around the eye and one for the pupil itself. Now let's put another lovebird nestling up alongside. So again, we'll come round a nice curve for the head, out to the shoulder and to the wing and down to where they're going to be sitting on the branch. I'm going to bring her, his beak in front of her head and then we're going to do that same white band around the top of the beak and a little hook over for the beak itself. Two ovals for the eye. One, two. Lovely. And then we're going to curve around and give her her other side, her left hand side and then nestling nice and close together. So I'm just putting a little V there. I think my bird's a little bit on the skinny side. So I'm just going to take my eraser, causing chaos here. Just going to rub him out and pop him in again. Make him a little bit rounder. There we go. And then a very simple branch for them to perch on. And we want their towels follow from the body out the other side. We'll put their towels peeking behind the branch. And then we just need some toes. So I'm going to raise the foot up slightly above the branch and bring three toes. One, two, three toes coming over the branch. So just raise up from that branch with your pencil mark. Come over. One, two, three toes. And the same for our other lovebird. Raise up from the branch. You can have the toes in slightly different places, maybe spread apart a little. And there we have our lovebirds. All I'm going to do now is put a little indication where I want the head colour to be and the breast colour. That's it. Now just put in a little line down because over on the edges is going to be their wings. And there we have our lovebirds ready to paint. So we're going to keep this nice and loose and going to work wet into wet. I'm going to be using two brushes today. Um, I'm going to be using my size 6 and my size 12. I'm just looking for my size 6 in the pot. Here we go. Size 6 and size 12. Let's get started then. We, as I say, we're going to work wet into wet. So we're going to add water to our first bird, a nice even coat of water going over the head. Let me pop my glasses on. 
the only place I want you to avoid is the beak and the eye, okay? And a nice even coat of water. I'll hold my paper up in a minute so you can see the shine. And we're just doing one bird to start with. If we wet them both, all the colours are going to bleed together. So can you see the shine on the paper? Hold it up for a little while. And let that water puddle to one side and then just run your brush down and lift off any excess water. It's an easy way to make sure you've got it nice and even. I'm just using my three primary colours and a little bit of Payne's Grey or Friends Grey for this. So I've got Hansa Yellow, Phalo Blue and Quinacridone Magenta. But if you're going to like this video, I'm sure you're going to like this video, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and you'll also find another tutorial there about my primary colours and why I chose them and how to mix them. So hands are yellow first. Now, I want this fairly creamy, like a single cream, somewhere between a tea and a cream, milk and cream. You see that lovely bright colour and we're just going to tap in with our yellow. By having the paint slightly creamier you're going to control how far it bleeds into the paper and then I'm going to drop a little bit of my blue into a corner of my yellow in the palette here and we're going to start going into the green. coming around the top of the feet and the branch and encourage that green, just nudge it into the yellow. And we should get that lovely transition of yellow to green. Beautiful. Let's not forget underneath the branch, we need some yellow again. Coming on the right hand side of the towel and then we're going to pick up our green on the right hand side and where they meet the colours will nicely blend. I'm going to add a little bit more blue to my green. Phalo blue and hands of yellow give you the most delicious bright green to work with. Just mixed up a bit more green there and I'm going to pop tiny little puddles of colour just touching down with my brush and lifting off to get these pops of stronger green close to the branch and I'm just going to push that green towards the yellow on his towel. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, we now want to bring a bit of an orangey glow into our lovebirds. So I'm going to take some yellow and I'm going to take a little bit of magenta. Oh, and look at that beautiful, vibrant orange. We've got a peachy orange we've got going on. And I'm going to start doing the same again as we did with the green. Just touching in. Avoid the beak. A little bit of colour. See how far it goes. Don't worry if it goes places you don't want it to. We can mop that up with a dry brush. So I'm going to encourage that into the yellow. Just playing with the tip of my brush. There we go. Beautiful. Kind of don't mess around with it too much. I prefer you to embrace. Oops, a bit, she says. Okay, there's a prime example. I didn't clean my brush and I put some orange where I don't want it. So I'm just going to scoop that out with a dry brush and pop some yellow back in. Perfect timing, Eunice. Perfect way. To demonstrate how you can fix things with your paint with your wet in wet okay we're going to come up to the head now now the head i want to do a sort of brownie gray so we're going to mix this i'm going to take my i'm going to make an orange first quinacridone magenta and yellow we'll make a nice rusty orange touch more magenta in there Whoops, I'm being really heavy handed today. Okay, a and then we're going to add the third of our primary colours, the blue, a little bit at a time. 
and you will see it change to a gray this has gone gray now a lovely gray but i want it a bit more brown so to make it brown i'll add a touch more yellow i'll be a bit more gentle this time touch more yellow a touch more red so you can there we go perfect we've got my perfect brown and we're going to go into the head i'm going to run my brush around the outside of my bird's head and around the beak okay and watch it migrate and slowly move down before you go add in more paint i'm just going to creep that in towards the eye that's a lovely color actually beautiful brown and under the eye and i think i want a little bit more yellow coming up the back of the head so i'm going to bring a bit more yellow in the back of the head touching into the brown and you've got that lovely soft transition between all of those colors going on i'm just going to take my green and tidy up the edge of my love bird there we go and i do want to bring more of a wing in up his shoulder but i need to wait until the paper starts to dry there's still a lot of shine on my paper so i'm just going to wait for that shine to disappear and then we can go in and pop his wing in so we're going to dry this one off with the hair dryer don't blast it too hard you don't want to blow your paint around just have it on a low setting and dry him off here we go okay that's dry enough now for me to go in with my size six brush and i'm going to take my green a bit creamier a bit thicker nice strong pop of color to come along and it's just my phalo blue and my hands are yellow I'm just going to turn my page around a little bit i'm going to come into that shoulder into the wing that we can just see on the left hand side there and kind of taper off as we go down i'm going to do a little bit of this dark green down on the towel as well lovely now down on the towel i don't want a line his wing doesn't go down that far so i'm going to bring some clean water i'm going to creep up on that green touch into it so that it bleeds out across the towel i tried to be clever and use my right hand there i'm a left hander any more left handers out there okay now we can go and do his beak and his eye um, now his eye I'm going to use friends gray or you can use Payne's gray or you could use a neutral I want this quite creamy so it's nice and dark you could also if you wanted to use a fine liner pen to do that work I haven't got my fine liner pens on my desk at the moment but you could use a fine liner pen now we're going to leave a halo around the eye and then I'm going to go into the middle part of the oval the central oval i'm going to paint around the oval shape leaving a little glint in the eye so just creeping up filling in the eye and leaving that little bit of white paper towards one side i'm going to turn this round oh, i was going to do the other one i'm not going to do the other one i could do because we're not going to put any water there so whilst you've got your gray you could come into the other eye because as i say we're not going to put any color near that eye so it's safe so the other eye is in we can also take our gray and water it down a little bit so it's lighter and we can come in to the toes of our birds again we can do both toes on both birds at this stage lovely and now we need a nice bright red beak now you notice i said we're using phalo blue magenta and yellow i don't have any red red is not a primary color and if you go across to my other video about um, color mixing 
you will see that red is not a primary colour. It's mixed by taking your magenta and a little bit of yellow, a little bit of yellow at a time, so it doesn't go orange. And before it does go orange, it goes pillar box red. So all these years we've been taught red, blue and yellow are primaries. Red is not. Have a look in your printer at home and you will see. I'm going to come into his beak. I want this nice and creamy. I'm going to add a bit more paint there to make it thicker. So it's nice and creamy and vibrant for the beak. Lovely. And I'm going to do much as I did with the eye. I'm going to come around the beak. Around the edge. Oops. Let's get the point back on my brush. And then I'm going to, I want to shine on his beak. So I'm going to sneak that paint further across, just pushing it with my brush and leave a little highlight on the beak. I'm also going to tidy up that line. Across the top of the beak, leaving a bit of white there for the band of white. Oh, we have one bird. How cute was that? I'm just going to dry his beak off because I don't want it to bleed into Mrs. Lovebird. So hair dryer again. Give it a quick dry. Okay. And into the next Lovebird. So same process again. We're going to wet the paper all over, avoiding the eye and avoiding the beak. Controlling where the paint's going to go with the water. Once you've applied that water everywhere, and use the tip of your brush to get into the pointy bits. Tip your paper up. Tip it. I'd suggest you tip it away from the other bird. Wait for that puddle to form. If you get a puddle form, mop up the extra water with your brush. There we go. And we're going to go the same way as we did before into our yellow. Pop it in. Have fun with it. No stress. Into our green. Encourage that green into the yellow. I might add another little bit of yellow to this one. Touch more yellow down there. And look how those colours blend together to give you this wonderful mix right there on the paper. And into the towel, let's not forget the towel. Taking more yellow to one side. And then green on the left. And then we want our beautiful orange colour that we mixed up before with our magenta and our hands of yellow. In we go. Pop that lovely blush colour down around the neck, under the beak. If you feel you've put too much colour on, all you need to do is go in with your brush and mop some of that up if it spreads too far. There we go. We've got our nestling lovebirds. How cute are they? Into the head colour again, into that brown we mixed earlier. I'm going to turn my birds around so I get a nice angle. And in we go. Around the edge of the head first. Down towards the back of the neck and around the outer perimeter of the eye. I'm making you all giddy turning my page around just so that I get a better angle on Always be comfortable when you're painting, that you've got the angle that's comfortable for you. And turning back round again. There we go. I'm going to bring a bit of that brown down towards the beak. Just playing around on the end of the brush. Keeping that halo around the eye. There we go. 
lovely and look how those colors are just working so well together on the page and now of course we need to wait for her to dry or we grab our hair dryer okay into mrs lovebird and into the beak nice creamy red using your magenta and your yellow or any red you want to use coming around the top band of the beak around the curve of the beak and then filling in the gaps to leave that shiny highlight lovely i'm just going to tidy that up a little bit sneaking in a little bit higher there we go our two little lovebirds sitting on their perch so let's give them a perch let's go down to the perch now this time i'm going to work wet on to dry i'm going to take my brown we mixed up earlier for their heads i'm going to add a little bit more yellow to it and a little bit more magenta to take it a bit more orangey like a burnt sienna just reutilizing that puddle of paint that we had earlier there we go a nice burnt sienna color maybe a touch more yellow fabulous and i'm going to run this down the middle of the branch avoiding their toes wet on to dry this time so we've got more control and then with my gray not too wet with your brush when you pick up your gray damp only otherwise it'll all bleed together too much i'm going to come along the top of the branch and where the gray touches the brown it should meet and blend together i'm going to go between my bird's toes as well top and bottom keeping things nice and simple today turning that round top and bottom and you want it to touch in to the brown you've put down the middle and just let it run together i'm going to take a touch more of my brown my burnt sienna take that in between my bird's toes be careful between the toes lovely i want to take my gray a little bit stronger notice i'm still using my size 12 brush make sure you're right up on the point i want to bring the edge of that branch a little bit stronger so i'm going a bit creamier spin it round and down the bottom too onto the tip of the brush use a smaller brush if you feel not confident fabulous there we go and i think their little toes need a little bit more defining so again going to my tiny brush i'm just going to add a little bit of the gray between the toes just to give their feet a bit more definition against the branch and there we have our lovebirds it looks beautiful as it is or you could add a background to it and as it's valentine's day i'm going to do just that so there's our little lovebirds they look lovely as they are as they are but as it's nearly valentine's i'm going to do something in the background here we go okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a heart i'm going to create a heart shape around my birds so that they're kind of nestling in a heart shape how cute i want to take it quite close i'm going to have the branch peeking out so the branch is kind of poking out each side of the heart a very scrappy heart 
really lightly sketched and now it's just about choosing what color I use I think I'm gonna go for a really light kind of the color that's in their beak in their chest I think that will work really nice so that orange that we mixed with our magenta making a big puddle of this so I don't run out of colour and my yellow make that peachy orange colour I think that will be nice and maybe I'll add a little bit of pink here and there too so I'm going to wet that heart shape with water I'm going to do half at a time I'm going to come around the left hand side first In fact, let's stop at the branch. That's a nice break point for you. We'll stop at the branch. Then I'm going to take my peachy colour and drop it into the water. I don't want this too strong. I want it nice and light, close to the birds. I think it's nice to use a colour that we've used within the painting. lovely and let that bleed out towards the edge of the heart nudge it around okay let's go around the other side turn your paper around if it's comfortable just bring your water in first use the tip of your brush to go around the birds and then take a bit of your orange drop it in and just have fun with your brush bounce your brush around in the water not too much color as I say you don't want to take away from the lovebirds so keep it nice and muted and then down the bottom this way the the water that you're putting down if you're a little bit slower at painting it doesn't matter by doing a bit of the heart at a time you can just relax and not worry about the, the water drying on your page before you get to that section and taking that branch through the heart I think works really well okay now I'm gonna have a bit of fun and try and create some leafy shapes around the edge of this heart so I'm going to go into the heart with a bit of this same color and I'm just going to play with the end of the very tip of my brush around the outer edge of the heart kind of creating a broken edge but also giving it the look maybe of leaves and twigs almost you almost just want a tremor on your hand and just use that point of the brush as you push away from the heart oh that's pretty so pretty and carry on round now in some places the paint's going to be darker than what you've put in the middle but that should all work to our advantage and it will bleed into that heart shape as the heart's still wet just a little, really don't think about the fact that you're painting twigs and leaves unless you really want to take that time now as we come round I'm going to add some magenta to this side a bit more magenta coming in so going from that orange through to the magenta just use that tip of the brush create spiky leaf shapes and you want to touch into the wet water around the birds our initial heart shape so that that pink bleeds in maybe a bit of pink up here too so pretty and then as I go around the bottom I'm going to head back to peach how sweet is that now I've dropped a little bit more color than I want down there so I'm just going to mop it up with my brush take a dry brush I love it when things go wrong because you get to see the fix and just mop it up
maybe bring a little bit more of that pink coming in and if you wanted to you could drop some yellow in the other side too shall i do that i don't know i really like it as it is i'm scared so <laughs> i'm going to take a little bit of yellow a little bit a little tiny bit just because I'm thinking the orange was made from the hands of yellow and the magenta. So if I add a little bit of yellow, it kind of brings it together. Just take some yellow leaves out this side. What do you think? I'm going to stop there. <laughs> I hope <laughs> you've enjoyed painting these little lovebirds with me for valentine's day i've had fun i hope you have too remember to hit the subscribe button check out my watercolor playlist and i'll see you again soon take care keep painting bye for now bye